What's up, producers? Here are about 20 quick tips, shortcuts, and hidden features in Pro Q3 from FabFilter in about three and a half minutes. All right, so let's just jump right in. You probably know that to add a filter node, you just come over this yellow line, click, drag, and drop. You might not know that if you hold Alt and do it, you'll instantly get a dynamic node instead of having to come down here and activate it that way. I can get rid of that by hitting X. If I want to bring it back, it's just like every other program, and that's a Control Z. To bypass a node, you can turn it on or off right here, or you can use the shortcut, which is Alt clicking the node. Bypassed, turn it back on. Now, if we come into the node, we can do some cool things with the frequency and gain positions. For the gain, for example, if I double click and input a value, I can say something like 2X which will make it two times louder. I can also use percentages here. So maybe 50% will bring it back to the middle. So it's the percentage of the full range from negative 30 to plus 30. So 50% will be in the middle. Anything below will be on the left side. Anything above will be on the right side. The frequency, you can do the same thing. To show you what I mean, I'm gonna open up the keyboard and if you didn't know, if you double click any one of the keys, you'll get a filter node right on that position. It's called quantizing the frequency. What you might not know is that if I double click right here, not only can I input individual Hertz values, but I can also say something like 1K and it will put it to 1000 Hertz. And keyboard related, if I say A4, it'll put it at 440 Hertz, which is standard A tuning. Now, once I have a node, if I hold shift, I'll get micro movements. That's the same thing with your parameters inside of this control interface. If I hold Alt and drag up, I won't be able to drag to the left and the right unless I really go for it. And that's the same thing if I hold Alt and then go to the left and the right, I won't be able to go up or down. And it's just a way to keep the gain relative or keep the frequency relative. Now, obviously if we go too far, it will break out of that. It's just meant to keep you in line if you're not meant to be moving to the left or the right or up or down. Now, if I have multiple points, I can select any of them by dragging and dropping, and then I can move those relative to each other. I can select them all by dragging and dropping over all of them. If it's a negative and I drag down, it's gonna go down, but if it's selected on the top and it's in the positive, it's gonna go up. I can also control click any parameters that I want to adjust like that. So click one, control click another, and then another, and then I'll have those, but the one I didn't click will stay separated. If you wanna go sequentially, you can click and then hold shift, and that will select everything between the node that you selected at the beginning and the end. So you see all three here are now selected. Now adjusting the cue, I can use my mouse wheel. If I hold shift, it will give me a micro movement as well. And I can also control the cue by holding down control and dragging up and down. All right, my last tip is about soloing a frequency band. To do that, you just gotta hold down the headphones here. Now, what you might not know is if you hold the headphones and then drag up with your cursor, you'll actually get an increase in the audition value. You won't be increasing the gain of the filter, but the auditioned audio will get louder for you. Now, that's great if you're trying to zone in on a particular frequency, but if you already have something locked and you just wanna make sure it's exactly where it should be, you can use one of our earlier tips, which is holding down Alt and then dragging up and your frequency position won't move. There you go. I hope that speeds up your workflow and helps you get the most out of this incredible EQ from FabFilter. See you in the next video.